was 90 degrees today, no water, no food, and I drove the bus. It's Ramadan, the holy month of fasting for 500,000 New York City Muslims. For non-Muslims like us, the word Muslim is most often associated with the terrible things you see in the news. But we know that's hashtag fake news, and we wanted to know the truth. What about the average Muslims who live in this city, who work in this city, pray in this city, who were born in this city? Our new friend Sana reached out to show us what it's really like for the half million Muslims who live in New York City. During Ramadan, your day starts way before sunrise. Ramadan is a month-long fast celebrating the Quran being revealed to Prophet Muhammad. Observing Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam. Hey! Salam alaikum! Shoes off, everybody. Sana and her twin sister Salima are lifelong Muslims from Brooklyn. Sana is an MTA bus driver by day, but during Ramadan, she's up at night cooking the pre-dawn meal. The goal is to cook and eat before the first prayer of the day at 3.45 a.m. So right now, like across New York, it's 2 in the morning and, and there's just like Muslims around New York cooking, doing the same thing in their kitchens. <laughs> do you read the Quran on your phone? <laughs> Absolutely. How often do you read the Quran? All day. All day. Over 25% of Muslims in the U.S. are American-born African-Americans. Up to 30% of slaves brought over from Africa were Muslim, but Islam was heavily suppressed by plantation owners. In the last 70 years, many African Americans have returned to Islam. This morning, Sana is cooking shrimp and grits. My mom says, you know, you could learn a lot from slavery because slaves would eat a heavy meal like this, not the shrimp. The master wasn't giving them shrimp. They gave them pork booty, but they ain't giving them shrimp. You know, they, you're full, you're, you're satisfied. And so it, will, it holds you for the whole day. I'm gonna go hard because that's what I have to get, that's what I need, I need that meal to get me through the day. Most folks ask questions like, what's more important, food or drinking? It's not the food you wanna drink. And this is the last thing you're gonna eat until 8 p.m. and it's three in the morning. This is a really good way to go into it. After finishing their meal, Sana and Salima prepare for prayer. Well, the reason why we're sitting in chairs is because we have knee injuries. Me, because of my motorcycle accident. Yes, I ride motorcycles. We are officially, right now, in fasting mode. We are in a state of worship. So there is no more drinking, there is no more eating. Um, Sana's married, I'm not, you know, there is no more husband and wife grown up dance. I love you, Sana. After a quick nap, it's time to go be a bus driver. Life doesn't stop just because it's Ramadan. You still have to go to work. So under normal circumstances, we should be leaving here at 10, but New York City is not normal. So we're leaving now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got your seatbelt on? Hmm? You gotta get the work, gotta make it do what it do. You can't be the only Muslim driver, no, right? No, 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 no. There's a bunch of us there. I call them undercover Muslims. <laughs> like, I'm Muslim. I'm like, why are you whispering? <laughs> we aren't even at work yet, and I am so tired. I'm dying. I don't know how you do this for 30 days and work. <laughs> I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> Sana takes over her bus route at 11.17 a.m. She'll drive without food or water until her route ends at 8.29. On her breaks, Sana pulls over the bus to pray. How long does the prayer usually take? It's like five to ten, eight minutes. It's not that long, so I don't see why people don't pray. I'm digging deep, I'm tired. You know, fasting teaches you how to be humble and fasting teaches you how to be grateful. Sana continues her fast until her work day ends. How tired are you? I'm exhausted. Exhausted. She breaks her fast just after sundown. The fourth prayer of the day follows the break fast. Hold on. Now it's time to eat up. Hydrate. Oh my god, it's all gone. Pray for the fifth and final time of the day and get some sleep. Tomorrow is another day of Ramadan. We just got to Sana's house. It's the morning of Eid, which is a huge day. Eid, Mubarak, Mubarak.
Sorry. Eid is the holiday marking the end of Ramadan. It's like Christmas for Muslims. I'm excited because um, I feel accomplished. This, this Eid was kind of tough a little bit. I get to see my friends and my family. On our way to the masjid. Masjid is the Arabic word for mosque. And there's going to be no music on the drive. No music, so Sana and her husband Anthony will be singing to us. Eat Mubarak! Every single person on the street this morning is Muslim on their way to the masjid. It's a really amazing sight. These brothers are from Bina Faso. Yeah, Faso, yeah. Right? Where are you from, bro? Uh, did you? I'm from the island of Jamaica. My family's from Bangladesh, but I was born in Brooklyn. So, what's happening now is this is the side for the men, and the baby and I are going to go to the side where the women are. So, we'll see you after the ceremony. Yep. The Declaration of Faith is the first pillar of Islam. It begins by saying, Allahu Akbar, meaning God is great. Has anyone been inside a mosque before for a prayer session? No. No. Today, more than 1,200 people have come to the mosque, filling the building beyond capacity. We've got two floors filled with only men, and those who can't fit will be standing outside. NYPD has closed off a full city street outside for people to pray. On Eid, New York City's 500,000 Muslims from around the world come together to celebrate. I mean, this is fascinating. There are people here from all over the world, people from a few blocks away. Sana just kind of dropped us off because the men and women get split up. So suddenly we just found ourselves just totally out of our element. And what we experienced was, was very humbling. You think of the word Muslim and it's one word. But when you're here and there's like a thousand people on the street, you can see colorful outfits and beige outfits and different hats. And, and you can see all the different places from around the world that people are coming from and there's just hugs everywhere. I mean this is something that we never would really go experience just like in our daily lives. We're about to go meet up again with Sana and go enjoy this post-Ramadan life. Okay so the sun is out. I mean it's very strong. And you're and you're drinking. <laughs> I guess that says it all. <laughs> After fasting and, 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 and being the food vampire, yeah. <laughs> as we say, you know, today they gonna people won't be packing it in. Trust me. All right, time to wrap things up. We're gonna have our last meal with Sana after this amazing adventure. Hey, Sana. Alaikum. Let's party. The representation of our friendship. We got us some black and white cookies. <laughs> <laughs> We're heading to the Marcy Projects with Sana. We're gonna go meet up with her family and just eat a bunch of great food. Celebrate. The whole family's coming together. Sana and Salima grew up in the Marcy Projects in bed -Stuy, in the building right next door to Jay-Z. They were some of the only Muslims in a mainly black Christian community. I'm at my auntie's house to eat some grub. <laughs> this is rice and peas. Oh, oh, oxtail. Yeah. That's oxtail. Oh, yeah. That's wow. Yankee that jerk. Not... Wow. Macaroni pie. Yeah. Salima also goes by Bertha Stewart because <laughs> she's apparently a hell of a cook. We're going to find out. But I'm not. Absolutely. Bismillah in the name of God. I eat. Everything here is Caribbean. Yeah. They're it's good. so good. Okay? Right. Come on. Is really, you like it? So good. I still have fasting guilt, meaning, oh my God, is this, the sun is up and I'm, I'm eating. And I'm just really, really grateful for my family and friends. All right, I'm just about done with this plate, and now I feel like I have to fast for about 30 days. <laughs> what do you, like, so what do you think people think of when they hear the word Muslim? Oh, they definitely think Pakistani and Arab. They, the last thing that they think of when they think Muslim is a black American Muslim. It's, it's just like it's a forgotten demographic of people. There's a side to being Muslim that you don't see in the news, and that's exactly what Sana showed us. Like anyone's neighbors, they do some things a little differently. But in the end, Muslims are just as hardworking, fun, and family-oriented as any other American, working their faith into an otherwise normal New York City life. <laughs> I'm Sana. There are two sides to any story. If you enjoyed this one, please share it. Help us spread the message that people are good. <laughs>